Hey, what is up, everybody? Messi and Co. Five Reasons family, how you guys doing? Excited to do a preview for you guys for DC United and Inter Miami CF. So that game is taking place tomorrow at 2 p.m. March 16th, Saturday at Audi Stadium in Washington. So just kind of want to talk to you guys about the game, what we can expect, uh, some news that's coming out. As of late, uh, in regards to Inter Miami, Messi, lineups, that sort of thing. So, just kind of want to go through that and then, um, yeah, give you guys maybe some predictions and what to expect as far as maybe formations, strategies, just so we can kind of prepare you guys for the game. So, uh, right off the bat, let's go ahead and get into some of the latest news, right? So, some of the latest news. If you guys watched the game against Nashville for the Conca Champions, the leg two, on Wednesday, Inter Miami won the game and convincingly, right? Uh, we're in, we're going against now Monterrey in the quarterfinals of the Conca Champions. So that's great news. But with that comes some not so good news. And what's that not so good news? Messi left the game in the second half against Nashville. Now, right from the get go, the game starts. And Messi is grabbing at his right hamstring. He's grabbing at his hamstring. We've seen that before. This is not the first time he has issues with that. So right off of the bat, we were wondering what the heck is happening. Hopefully it's nothing serious. But then comes the second half. He makes his way onto the field. Within the first couple of minutes, he gets subbed off. Now, we're worried. We don't know. Is it a precaution? Is it not? You know, Inter Miami has and Messi have kind of already spoken to that. If he feels something and he knows his body better than anybody, he wants to make sure that he's not going to get injured. Boom. We ain't taking any risk. We're getting him out of the game. So that happens. We're all speculating what is going on. After the game, we go to the post game and Tata Martino right off the bat tells us he's not playing against DC United. He's not going to be available. So that to us made us a little bit afraid. Maybe it wasn't just precaution. Maybe there is something going on there. And then today, Javi Morales, Inter Miami's assistant coach, tells us that he again reiterates he's out against Inter, uh, excuse me, against DC United, and he's gone under medical evaluations, medical tests, and they're waiting on confirmation of those tests to see what the extent of the injury is and how much time he'll be out. So that's kind of where we're at right now, waiting to figure out what is going on with Messi, how many days he will miss. We also know that he's got two games for Argentina coming up for international duty, FIFA. Um, so we're kind of, that's kind of up in air right now, what is going on. Um, and then other news that is a bit uh, nicer news and not so like gloomy because, it, you know, it... Um, Inter Miami, it looks like, has their right back. Inter Miami looks like he has their right back. El Cello Wengat from, from Boca Juniors has signed the contract and should be presented by Inter Miami, looks like maybe next week. So for those of you guys like me that aren't a fan of the 5-3-2 formation that Tata Martino has been playing with because he doesn't have a natural right back, hey, it might finally be the end of that 5-3-2 formation. So we'll see how that goes. But just wanted to share that news with you guys so you know. Um, but with that, if there's no Messi, then we're going to kind of look at this again as we, as we preview this game. What is this game going to look like? What is the strategy going to look like? What is the formation going to look like with no Messi on the field? So first things first let's look at where these teams stand that's going to be important here so where do these teams stand after four games for inter miami inter miami stands in first place with seven points uh that's seven points four games played two wins one loss one tie and then as far as dc united they have three games in hand they are in currently, let's see, where are they? They are in sixth place with three games played, one win, and two ties. I believe that one win was at home for them, and the other two were two away ties against Cincinnati and against Portland. So uh, Inter Miami, as far as they're concerned, they have those two wins, one of those losses, 
is was actually their most recent league game um against montreal and it was without messi so what can i say um you know messi's really important to this team it's really tough to replace them but that's something that we're going to have to keep in mind as the season moves forward you kind of got to start looking at this where you're going to need other players to step up and not replace because you can't replace messi but try to replace as much of what he brings step up their game because inter miami is going to need that they're very much dependent on messi uh but now they got guys like suarez They've got guys like Gomez that have been stepping up. They've got Redondo in there. They're going to have to have. They're going to have to figure out a way to get through games in the absence of Messi, whether it be for injury, whether it be out of precaution, whether it be because he's missing games for Argentina, especially with Copa America coming up, where he could potentially miss up to one fifth of the season if Argentina make it all the way to the finals. And then obviously you've got international uh, FIFA breaks where MLS doesn't take a break, but uh, Messi's still going to be away. So that's something that Inter Miami needs to start to focus on and making sure they find ways to continue moving on up and getting, getting points in Messi's absence. So with that in mind, how has Inter Miami been doing? Inter Miami, we're going to go ahead and look here, has um, since February 2024, when the season started, they won their first game 2-0 against Salt Lake. Then they went to L.A. where they tied, which is a pretty good result in my opinion. They got a 1-1 tie, got one point away from home against a good L.A. team, and um, that was really good for them. Then in March, we come back, we play 5-0, we win 5-0 against Orlando, and it's probably one of the most convincing wins, I think, maybe in Inter-Miami history. And then we play against Montreal, and we lose 3-2 with no Messi. Now, I know that, you know, we probably think, hey, no Messi. There was no way they were going to win this. But if you watch the game, that game was actually a lot closer than it looked. Inter Miami had plenty of opportunities, especially in the first half where they weren't able to get the job done and finish. In fact, there were even offside goals, the goals that were so close. that when Alva scored a goal that was called offside just by his shoulder. Um, there were plenty of chances for Inter Miami to win this game. They fought till the very end. It was just a kind of like a little bit of a lapse there within a few minutes that they got scored on. Um, I believe they got scored on minute 70 and then no, no, actually minute 74. They got they got scored on in minute 74 off of a set piece and then they got scored on minute 77 again. So it was a lapse of about three minutes there where Inter Miami just got lost and they really lost concentration. They got scored on twice there. Um, and it just so happens that they couldn't regain. They didn't have enough time. They went ahead and Campana scored after that um, to kind of give them a chance. But again, just a little too late. But I think that kind of looking at that game, one of the things that we need to focus on is our set pieces. We know that Inter Miami was a team that suffered the most against the set piece goal last season. And then looking into this season, now we've got, again, a stronger defense. You've got Freire in there. Um, I think that this team needs to focus on making sure that they're man marking as good as possible, that they're all in line on those set pieces to make sure they were, they're able to draw whoever the runner is on that set piece to drive them offside, that we've seen issues so far with that. And unfortunately, we suffered from that against Montreal. So that's something that we need to make sure we kind of take a look at as we move into our, our next games. Now, what about DC United? Let's look at DC United. DC United won three to one against New England. I believe they played that one at home at Audi Field. And then the next two games, they played away from home in Portland and away from home in Cincinnati, which they tied 2-2 against Portland, 0-0 against Cincinnati. They got one point each. I mean, when you leave home, most of the time the goal is to get at least one point. They did that, and they also played one game without Benteke, I believe. So, you know, one of their really good players up front. So not a bad showing for them, but that's kind of how their trajectory has been so far this season. Um, so how did the teams line up? I think that's going to be important as we talk about kind of like the strategies and see what we can expect for Inter Miami to do in attack against 
uh, DC United. Let's kind of look at some of those lineups. So as we look at the lineup, what did, how did Inter Miami line up against Montreal? They lined up in that, well, it shows like a 3-5-2, but it's almost like a 5-3-2. Depends how you look at it. But calendar in the back, you had Noah Allen, Ailes, and Kristoff. In the defense, you had Alba, Sunderland, Redondo, Gresso, and Ruiz as your five in the middle. And then you had Taylor and Campana up front. That's going to look different now as we go against DC. Um, you're not going to have Campana in there. Most likely, you're going to have Suarez back. Then in the midfield, you're going to have Busquets back in there. Gomez is going to be in there. And I think that that will help Inter Miami look a lot better and feel a lot better in that midfield. And then as far as that back line with Kristoff in there, you might see instead of Kristoff, you might see, or we will most likely probably see Freda in there. So again, whereas they lost without Messi, they also lost with a lot of other, without a lot of other key players in this game that would have made, I think, a big difference. So that's kind of something to kind of hold on to and say, hey, you know, we could have been better this game. We could have lined up better. And then as far as what does DC United look like, um, they lined up with a 4-2-3-1 in their last game against Cincinnati where they tied 0-0. They play with two defensive midf midfielders, and then they've got Stroud, Gabriel, and Hopkins up front with uh, DeLone as the lone attacker. Uh, again, Menteca didn't play. So that's kind of how those two teams line up. So taking that into consideration, how should Miami attack DC United? So, you know, Inter Miami is a team that likes to hold on to the ball. They like to build on possession. They've got Alba that plays up the left wing that, man, he is a monster there. And if you can get that ball to him in stride through the left wing and then have most of the time it's been messy. We can't count on Messi for this game. But if you have someone like Robert Taylor or Suarez, wait for that ball in the penalty area. Alba loves to play that ball right back in there uh, for whoever's in that in that moment there can finish the the play so i think that that's something that we can very much look forward to um and i think that also taking guys like suarez taking guys like gomez and even robert taylor and putting a lot of pressure on that back line of three um yeah no well on that back line of four or three depending on how they play i think is going to be really important for uh, us as we attack, especially because DC United, in my opinion, don't have the strongest back line. And they also like to play a really high back line at times. So if you're able to line up and get a perfect pass, you can get a pass behind them and really give guys like Suarez and Taylor the ability to beat them off of the pass and end up with a good opportunity, maybe just by themselves against the goalie. Um, I wanted to show you here. We actually have a couple of examples of that. This is Portland versus DC United. As you can see, this was um, actually who is this? I have written here. We have Moreno that actually comes down the right side of the field, and he has a lot of DC United's kind of uh, defenders and midfielders paying a lot of attention to him. And then in the mid, right inside the box, you have Asprilla and number eleven right there for Portland, who are putting a lot of pressure on those two center backs. And then ultimately, this ended up being a goal where Moreno puts the ball into Esprilla right here, number 27, and he's able to score. So I think Miami's probably going to want to duplicate some of that as well and make sure you put a lot of pressure inside the box where I think that DC United kind of uh, struggles with that. And then just one more thing here. I saw this play. This was not a goal for Portland, but the way that Portland uh, played this against DC United very much reminded me of what we could possibly see with guys like Gressel and especially Alba, where, again, DC United plays a really high line, as you can see right here. And then you've got right here the winger on the right-hand side. And the ball, this this ends up being a really dangerous play for Portland where the midfielder plays the ball into the winger. The winger ends up with the ball right, with all this open space right here, right behind um, DC United's defense so i can kind of see that happening with inter miami where inter miami is going to try to look to do that with guys like alba taylor and gressel so that's something to look forward to and i think that that would be one of the keys for this game is to put again a lot of pressure on that high line that dc united likes to play and get guys inside the box um and then as far as what to expect from dc united on the attack hey these are guys that like to play on the wing as well um 
they've got guys like Stroud and uh, guys like who else? I have it written down here. Stroud and um, Stroud and Herrera, I think it is. Yeah, and they like to play down the wing. But one of the things I think is unique about this team right here is they're not afraid to shoot from outside the box, and that's something that. Busquets, Redondo, and Gomez are going to need to make sure that they close the spaces on DC United, that they pressure them as soon as they get the ball, kind of like they did against Nashville, where if we notice, they did a really good job of pressuring Haney Mukhtar and making sure that they didn't allow him to do much with the ball. They've got to go out there and make sure that they pressure these guys because I have a few images here just to show you guys like, it's just insane how many times they're shooting outside. Look, another shot right here from way outside. Um, another shot here from way outside, more towards the wing. Like these guys from DC United are not afraid to shoot and from anywhere outside the box. And that I think is really, really interesting as far as one of the things that Inter Miami is going to need to make sure that they um, take a look at. Right. Um, and then, well, that's don't want to go there, but yeah. So I think that that's something that Inter Miami is going to want to pay attention to, and I think that Inter Miami is going to have enough as they go into this game to get a good result. I'm not overly, I would say, I'm not overly concerned at at this point. I don't think that DC United's defense is strong enough to contain the offensive firepower that. Inter Miami is when you talk about guys like Suarez and Taylor up front, you talk about Redondo, who man, he can take two to three guys off the off the dribble and either shoot himself or put the pass towards like the penalty area where Messi has scored. And we saw him score previously in that play, but you're gonna have guys like Suarez that are gonna be waiting right there for that pass. Um, and then just the playmaking ability of Redondo. Redondo's great in the midfield, great at defending, but the moment that he gets the ball and starts the transition for Inter Miami, like I don't think that DC United have enough in the midfield and in the back line to be able to contain all those playmakers because even Suarez, yeah, he's a scorer, but he's one of the leaders in assists for Inter Miami. How do you like how how do you as a defense not only have to worry about how dynamic like Suarez is, like he's going to be able to score on you, but then he's also going to be able to do like he did against Nashville where he has the ball and then he's outside of the box. He's not in the box. And then Robert Taylor is the one that makes the run into, into the box. And, and Suarez places a perfectly timed center for, for Taylor to, to head the ball in. Like that's going to be really tough for DC United to, to kind of, deal with now the only concern i'm going to say that i have is going to be with inter miami's defense i think that inter miami is going to need to make sure that they don't allow these balls to be played from dc united's back line over their heads because if we noticed like montreal targeted christoph whoever was a, the, the forward for Montreal at that moment in time was right on Kristoff and they were they did they actually did two passes where they played from the back line and got it over Kristoff one it got past Kristoff and the um and calendar actually mistimed his header it got over him and we almost got scored on and then actually the following play was a corner because of that play and we actually did get scored on there and then the following play or the next long ball went towards Kristoff again, and Kristoff jumped, and now he mistimed his header, and that ended up in a possible goal. Again, luckily, we didn't get scored on that one because of Calendar's brilliance. But, hey, I was watching some of, the, some of these games for DC United in preparation for this, and DC United tried the same things in some of their games where they're playing that long ball over a high defensive line and trying to get beat the, def the, the back of the defenders. So I think that... DC United is going to try to do that same thing to Inter Miami, and that's something that they're going to be able that Inter Miami is going to need to be able to watch out for. And the second thing is, Inter Miami needs to make sure they continue to take care of the ball. The first few games were a bit shaky in, in the season, where you had guys like Gomez and guys like Busquets that were very uncharacteristic unchar for him, where he was being pressured as soon as he was trying to transition out into the attack. 
and it was causing turnovers on our part that were leading to crazy counterattacks where we were getting scored on. And I think that other teams have kind of fed off of that and tried that same perspective where, you know, yeah, we'll give you possession of the ball. I'm sure DC United is going to do the same thing. They'll give us possession of the ball, but we're going to try to pressure you as you try to transition from defense to offense and try to make your midfielders lose the ball. So if Inter Miami can control that, then I think we're good. I don't have any issues with the offense. I'm 100% confident that from the offensive standpoint, we're going to be able to get things done. Um, so with that, I'll actually go to my prediction and uh, tell you guys kind of what I expect for the lineup and what I expect for the score. So let's go ahead and do that. If you guys give me one second here, I wanted to show you a lineup that I actually, um, let's see here a lineup that I came up with. Uh, let's see here. Okay. So here is the lineup that I came up with that I think would probably be the uh, most probable. All right. So I think it's going to be a 5-3-2 again, even though you guys know I am a 4-3-3 guy. Um, but with what Tata has said, again, that he doesn't feel comfortable playing that back line of four without a natural right back, he's probably going to go with a uh, back line of three where it's going to be Alan Freire and Aviles. I don't think you can play Christoph right now. He's very, even though I will say kudos to him, he did get a lot better against Nashville. So, um, but I think it's going to be Alan Freire Aviles as your center backs. And then you're going to have Alba and Gressel are going to be your wing backs. Gressel's still going to have the opportunity to go up and participate in the offense he's um he's been actually a vital part of the offense even though he's been playing wing, wing back and not necessarily midfield getting in great passes and get great uh crosses and then you're gonna have gomez busquets and redondo in, in the midfield who in my opinion that's got to be the best midfield in mls you know you can comment and let me know what you guys think but to me that is the number one midfield in the mls with busquets and redondo you don't have to fear that midfielder from the defensive standpoint, those guys are locking it down. Gomez has done a great job too, but now you've also got an offensive firepower in Gomez. Gomez is going up and scoring and passing and just doing great. And I think he's going to be a great connection for the two guys we have up front where Suarez and Taylor. Uh, Suarez is Suarez. He is, man, just unstoppable. And then Taylor to me has always been a vital uh, part of this, uh, of this team. Again, his ability to, to create his own shots, his ability to take defenders off the dribble and and score and create is just something you can't replace. And then if you're wondering about Campana, I think Campana is not going to start. I think it's Taylor simply because if you need to take out Suarez, Campana is the most natural fit there. Campana can be a guy that, let's say Suarez is tired, Campana can come in and he can, he can play that number nine role. Or let's say you have a result where you're maybe there's 15 minutes left you're up by two and you want a bit more defense you take out Suarez you put in Campana Campana's going to be able to still have that offensive threat but he's going to give you more defense than Suarez because he's going to be able to run more and pressure more so with that I think that that's what my lineup is going to look like um and then as far as the score I I really think it's going to be a 3-0 I'm not overly concerned that we're going to get scored on by DC United I don't think they have enough firepower um, and I have confidence in our defense from what I saw against Nashville. So I think that they've been getting better, especially, again, if it's no Allen instead of Kristoff, I have a bit more confidence there. And then Alba and Gressel, I think they've done a good job to um, – that, and Tata has made that, that fix where Alba and Gressel are not necessarily going as high up as they would and leaving all the pressure on Allen, Freire, and Alba Alba and Gressel have gotten back in time to – help out a lot on defense and you've seen like a very defined line of five at times so that has helped a lot so again i'm not overly concerned with that and then i'm never concerned with the offense for inter miami especially when you've got swatted in there so i think that we're going to score um at least three goals i think it's going to be at least three goals um but again i don't think it'll be a, a i don't think we're going to necessarily dominate but i think it'll be a very even game where you might see uh, you know, a goal to start off the game, maybe the first 15 minutes Inter Miami scores and then another two goals maybe in the second half or maybe it's two in the first and one in the second. I think it'll be evenly spaced out the goal wise. I don't think it'll be just boom, 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 you know, like that. So uh, with that, I want to let you guys know I appreciate you tuning in. 
Um, if you're wondering, I probably should have mentioned this at the beginning, but if you're wondering where Ashley is, she couldn't make it today, but we wanted to make sure we got this episode out to you tomorrow, but she'll be around tomorrow to cover the game and we'll be around to do the post game as well. So, but she's good. Um, and yeah, we just look forward to, to the post game tomorrow with you guys. Make sure to follow us at messy and co that's M E S S I A N D C O. You can follow us on X. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Facebook and uh, make sure you like the video. The more you like the video, the more it goes out and as many people can get to see it, the better. So, uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch you on the next one.